In this video, I'll be demonstrating some custom brushes I created for Rebel. You can get these brushes from my website at aaronrutten.com. All of these brushes are sorted into my favorites category, and inside that category, we have various groupings of brushes. Let's start here up at the top with rendering. Here's soft airbrush. This is a really nice airbrush that we can use along with pen pressure and opacity to get a tapered gradient like this. There's also the grainy airbrush, which gives you the same effect, but with a little bit of grain. Any brushes that are grainy, utilize the grain and you can change that grain to a different grain if you like. To reset a brush to its default settings, just click this button here. Glazing airbrush is a little different. This brush builds up really slowly and you're meant to build up layers of color using the glazing technique. There's also glow brush, which will build up your color lighter as you overlap strokes, giving you a really nice glowing effect. There are a couple of ways you might wanna customize this brush. First, you could create a new layer, set it to screen, and now your colors will blend more naturally with the colors underneath. The other thing you might wanna do is go to paint in the brush creator, and if you look under paint blending, you could change this from screen to color dodge to get a different effect. Let's try the next brush, which is detail oils. This brush works really well for very fine lines. You could use it kind of like a pencil or a pen or just a very fine paintbrush. If I apply a lot of this here and mix another color into it, you can see that I get this sort of oily effect when I blend the two colors together. If I compare that to Smooth Pen, which is a similar very fine brush, this brush does not build up when I overlap colors. Instead, it just covers. So this brush would work better for inking, the other brush would work better for painting. Smooth pen is very smooth, but if you want a pen with some stabilization, choose smooth scratch board. You can see this brush has a bit of stabilization so I can draw straighter lines and smoother curves. You can fine tune that smoothing in the properties to add more or less. Next is glazing soft. This is a glazing brush with a soft edge and I can use it to very easily build up values like so. I could also use it with white, and I could build up light colors using overlapping strokes. There's also glazing hard, which works the same as glazing soft, except the edge of the brush is sharp or hard rather than soft. Sketching pencil is an amazing pencil. If I draw with it upright, I get a very thin line. But if I tilt my pen, I can draw with the side of it to get a really nice shading effect. This is very much like how a traditional pencil would work. Thin lines, and then tilting it gives me these nice broad marks that I can use for shading. Here's chalk. As you might imagine, this brush looks sort of like chalk. You could dab with this brush to build up trees or add texture. If you make the brush larger, that texture gets bigger. And if you make the brush smaller, that texture gets finer. For a more random result, we can try random chalk. And this is chalk with more randomization added to it. The texture overlaps a lot more, so it may be more difficult to get that texture, which is why I have the chalk brush. As you can see, the chalk brush gives you texture with more gaps in it. Also grouped with these texture brushes is variable shape. If I press with firm pressure, I get this clumpy pattern like this. But if I press with very light pressure, then I'll get something that's a little more speckled. This brush works really well for painting trees because I can use firm pressure to put down these base shapes here for my trees. Then I can select a lighter color and use lighter pressure on top of that to add little leaves that are a different shape. Let's take a look at sponge. I can dab with sponge or I can paint with it. And this gives me a really nice spongy texture that I can put over something can build up multiple colors like so, and I get something that looks sort of rusty or rocky. Let's try speckle spray. Speckle spray will spray out speckles, as you might imagine. You can control the size of the speckles with the size of the brush, so a smaller brush will give you finer speckles. You can also go to shape and grain, and you can customize the grain to scale the size of the speckles as well in relation to the size of the brush. For a finer spray, we have pepper spray, and this brush just spits out one pixel at a time, so you could use this to put in some very, very fine details. You might want to use this to create sparkles or glitter, something like that. And last in this category is cylinder pen. 
I'll select a brown color. Cylinder pen is very interesting because you get this dab that is sort of split in half. This gives you the effect of a highlight and a shadow side, and you can use this to your advantage while drawing tree branches and all sorts of other objects. Moving on down to blenders, here is a collection of brushes that just blend. I'll add some paint that I can blend here. Let's start with diffuse blur, and this gives you a really nice diffused effect where the pixels scatter. The only downside of this brush is if you use it near the edges of a layer where it's transparent, it expands the color outward farther than it should. Here's Grainy Blender. This is a similar blender that gives you a nice diffused effect, but it's a bit more smudgy. This brush can be used along the edges without pulling the paint out unexpectedly. Here's Water Blender. This gives you a really nice wet blending effect. It might work well for blending watercolor together as well as other sorts of paint. This is another one where if I use it along the edges, it pulls the paint out unexpectedly. Here's blur. It may be kind of difficult to see what blur is doing, so you'll have to zoom in quite a bit. But basically, it's just making the edges a bit softer. Here's smooth knife blender. This is a nice oily brush. Now, when you blend with this brush, this is going to create some impasto. Impasto is the depth of the paint or the thickness of the paint. If you don't like this effect, you can go to Window Visual Settings and you can reduce or disable the impasto depth altogether. This brush is using a flat dab and the angle of the dab can be controlled by the tilt of the pen. So for example, I can have the brush be tall like this or wide like this and everything in between. Many of these flat brushes will react either to pen tilt or rotation if you're using the Wacom Art Pen. Let's try Oily Blender. This is another blender that gives you impasto, but it has a more bristly look to it. Here's Coarse Oily. This is a similar brush. It's just a bit coarser, as you can see with the dab. The bristles are a bit more spaced out. Here's Broken Blender. Broken Blender gives you a really nice paint break effect. I'll explain what that is later when we look at some of the other brushes. Let's check out Streaky Blender. Streaky Blender gives you these really fine streaks, so you might find this works well for blending grass or fur and things like that. Speckle Blender is next. This blends with really fine speckles. Here's Finger Blender. This is sort of a simulated fingertip, and you can dab with this or smudge it around to get some really interesting results as if you're smudging the paint with your finger. Again, Impasto is supported for this brush, so it will make your paint look a bit thicker. That's all for the blenders. Let's move on to the palette knives. Here's Smooth Knife. This is very similar to Smooth Knife Blender. In fact, it's the companion brush. As you can see, I make my brush thinner or thicker, but this time I'm controlling the angle with the rotation of the pen. Now, if you don't have the Wacom Art Pen, then you can use Tilt to angle this brush. I'll blend in another color here, and you can see it gives you this really nice oily blending effect if you use medium to light pressure. Next is Sharp Knife. Sharp Knife is a very fine brush with a lot of texture to it. So you could use this to create sharper details. Again, if you want to change that green to something else, you can do that very easily to get all sorts of different effects for these brushes that support grain. Mountain Knife is next. This brush works really well to create the outline of mountains. So I could put in something like this and use lighter pressure to kind of fade that out make it look a little bit misty or textured. I can make my brush smaller if I want that edge to be a lot finer and crisper. Then I can go over it with something else, let's say heavy texture. I'll turn on lock transparency. Let's pick a dark brownish color like this. I could put some texture over it like this. Again, you can control the thickness of this impasto with the impasto depth, so it doesn't have to be very thick and I can blend other colors into it and get really nice mixtures. Let's try Broken Soft. Now this is that paint break I was talking about earlier. You wanna angle your brush and use heavier pressure when you want the paint to be thicker or lighter pressure when you want it to break. Breaking means that there's holes in the paint. You can get these really nice textured results like this. These work really well for painting mountains. So this one is broken soft because the edge is kind of soft. It doesn't have a lot of impasto. There's also broken hard, which has a harder edge and a bit of impasto. Or there's broken thick, which is really thick. 
There's also broken grainy, which allows you to adjust the grain if you like, and make that larger and then you get bigger, wider grain. Next is the nature category. Here's brambles. This gives you some brambly looking textures. I can blend this with other colors if I like to get kind of a mixture. Here's bristly dabs. You can dab with this brush and it looks like I'm dabbing a bristle brush on the canvas. I can also paint strokes with it like this. I can add in other colors to create something that looks sort of like leaves or little plants. Here's bushy dabs. Again, you want to dab with this brush to get sort of a bushy effect. You can do little small swirling strokes too to get bushes that are at different angles. Put a few lighter leaves on top of that too. Here's cloudy. We'll use that with a light color that we can see against the background. And cloudy, you just want to make little circular strokes. Light pressure at the bottom fades those clouds out. Heavier pressure builds them up nice and thick. You can do some horizontal clouds like this as well. I can make my brush smaller if I want them to be even finer. Here's clumpy dab. You can dab with this brush to create clumps. These could be nice clumps of leaves. Here's grassy clumps. This allows you to put in instant grass like this. Put a lighter color over that. And there you go, there's your grass. If you want to add more details to that, there's the grass knife. And grass knife can be used to draw individual blades of grass like this. Here's Fan Evergreen. This is another brush that utilizes rotation or tilt. I'll use light pressure here at the top of the tree and then increase my pressure as I start to move down while moving side to side a bit. If I do it right, I'll get something that looks like an evergreen tree. And of course I can make my brush bigger to get bigger features here. And I can angle my brush if I want some of those limbs to hang down or I could flip it and I can have those features pointed upward. Then to add highlights to these trees, I can turn on lock transparency, select a lighter color, reduce the loading by a lot, and then paint over it like so. There's also fan highlights, which will give you a similar effect. If I turn off preserve transparency and we use this on its own, you can see it gives you these really interesting fan-shaped dabs with a bit of texture and bristliness to them. This one might work well for adding grass as well. Next up is fine brush. If I use this with a lighter color, this brush works really well for creating tree trunks. You could also use it to put in little twigs and limbs and things like that. Here's foliage down. This is foliage that points kind of down, assuming that your pen is angled down like this. But you could also have it point up. This creates a lot of foliage. And again, I can put another color over that to create some really nice instant trees. Medium pressure kind of blends the colors together. Here's leafy. Leafy gives you a different type of leaf. It's a bit more pronounced. This might be better for closer leaves, but you could still use this on top of the other brushes and sort of mix them together. Here's rocky. Get sort of a rocky effect with a bit of texture in it when you make a stroke like this. You can build it up, but that tends to kind of cover up that texture. And last in the nature category is sharp leaves. This is another style of foliage brush. As you can see, I can use light pressure to get finer features, heavier pressure to get bigger features. And if I add in colors, I can very easily add shading to my trees. Oily is a category of brushes that are very oily and smudgy. Here's chunky oily. Get a lot of impasto with this brush, but you can also fade it out to a more flatter, transparent stroke and blend in colors to this very nicely. Here's thick oily. Thick oily gives me some very thick paint. If I blend colors into that, you might be able to see that better. Again, I can blend out that thickness by using lighter pressure. Here's rough oily. This brush has a much rougher edge and a much coarser texture. Blend some other colors into that with lighter pressure and you can see it looks really nice and oily. Here's splatter oily. This gives you sort of a splattered effect in your strokes. Flat thin bristle is next. As you might imagine, you get bristles that are sort of flat and thin. Multi-stroke oils is a great brush because you can get some very nice multiple strokes that give you a sort of impressionistic effect. 
Heavier pressure will give you bigger dabs. Lighter pressure will give you smaller, finer dabs. And last is thick fractal. This gives you a really nice fractally effect. You can build it up, make your brush larger to make those features wider, add other colors to it, and then go into the visual settings and play with the depth to make it thicker or thinner. Let's take a look at the inking category. These are some specialty inking brushes. This is ink bristles. If I use lighter pressure, I get one or maybe two bristles. If I use heavy pressure, then I get several bristles. I can dab with this brush to create little splatters, and hair, and all sorts of effects. Here's stretched ink. And if I go to stretched, here I can stretch it out a bit. And when I do that, I can get all sorts of effects. So if I wanted something like a texture that goes this way, I could do that. Or I can really stretch it if I want something that looks maybe more like streaks or splashes. Really stretch it, and then I can get grass blades and things like that. Here's ink splats. And tap with this brush to make really nice splatters of ink. And last is hatching. This brush creates a lot of individual lines that you can use for shading. By angling your brush, you can control the angle of the lines. So if you wanted a cross-hatching effect, you can go against it like this. Lighter pressure will give you kind of a fainter result. Heavier pressure will give you a thicker result. This might even work really well for doing fur on animals. And the last category is watercolor. Here's cracked splat. This gives me this fine cracked pattern. And then if I let it diffuse, it'll start to soften and trickle together. I'm using some tilt with this brush. If I want it to drip more, I can add more water to it. Here's fine splatter. Get a really nice fine splattering of watercolor. And when I let it diffuse, it looks a lot better. Here's stretched drip. Again, I get that nice stretched effect that I can customize. If I want it to be stretched more, I'll add more stretch to it. This will give me some nice runny streaks. Here's soft dribble. Soft dribble gives me a more broad dribbling of paint that pools together more. Again, I can mix other colors into that. Here's fractal splat. This one might work well for doing trees and things like that. I'm going to turn the tilt off for this one because this one actually works better if you keep that texture. And again, if I look in shape and grain, I can control that grain and change it to something else. Here's wet dabber. As its name implies, you're meant to dab with this brush. You get these really interesting spots here like this. Let's try fractal wet. This gives me a really nice fractal effect and I can kind of blend it out and let the paint trickle together. And then last we have wet to drip. I'm gonna lay down some paint here. Then I'm gonna fast dry it. And now let's select wet to drip along with white and I'll paint over it. Now where these white dabs appear, those are drops of water. If I set the blend mode to multiply, that white color will go away. As you'll see, eventually you'll start to get these drips. If you want to change the drip size, you can make them thicker. Let's just add a couple of drips this time. And I can fast dry it to capture that dripping. There you have it. Those are my custom brushes for Rebel. Download them now at AaronRutten.com.